Mel Charlo is now the first undisputed champion at 154 pounds in the four belt era, meaning he's the first champion at that division um, while four belts were in existence, meaning, you know, there weren't always four sanctioning bodies. So when the, you know, um, the latest sanctioning bodies, which is the uh, WBO, and I believe the, uh, I believe the WBO is the youngest. It came around in the 80s, and, uh, and then I think the uh, w, the WBC, the WBA is the oldest. And then I believe it's the WBC, and then the W, uh, then the IBF. The IBF is the youngest, I believe. Then it's the WBO. But the youngest, I believe, is WBO and the IBF. The WBC and the WBA are the, are the oldest. Y'all know what I mean, though. It wasn't always for sanctioned bodies. So it was much harder now to get to become undisputed. When you think about it, it's much harder because you got to collect four belts instead of like one or two. You know, so, it's, you know, got to respect that. But that is the new status of Jamel Charlo. And I always said this about Jamel Charlo. You go back and look at my videos where I. I get on they motherfucking asses. I always say Jamel Charlo was that one that's a dog in the ring. He's he's I give him always give him his respect in the ring. I never down him and say he can't fight. You know, I always say he's the dog outside. He's a dog in the ring, but they look like kittens and stuff outside the ring. You know. <laughs> Keeping it all the way real. But yeah, he's the, now he is undisputed. So what's next for Jamel Charlo? Where does he go next? Does he defend his titles at 154 for a little bit? Or does he move up to 160? Well, you know, well, things are getting real interesting because there's a, there's a lot of uh, divisional changes going on. It's, it's about to take place soon. So this is like, this is like school. You know, you, you got everybody about to change grades and, you know, move up a level. You know, they graduate. He graduated out of 154 pretty much man if he just want to hang around a little bit then that's his that's his choice but he pretty much did all he needed to do at that division so he don't really have to stay around no more you know uh see people this is what i always say when people say the belts don't matter but then at the same time when you're undisputed you get all of the props in the world you see you know right now jamel charles undisputed uh terence crawford was undisputed uh, uh, Katie Taylor, she's undisputed. You know, when when you become undisputed, that means you collected all the belts in the division, right? So how does the belts not matter? You know, I I, I never understood that shit. One minute, they're like, how does the belts matter, and then undisputed matters? Like, okay, are you undisputed without belts? <laughs> just that the logic in that shit just never made no sense to me, man. But yeah, he's the man. He's the he's the he's the big dog at 154. He's the top. He's the top dog. He's the shot caller. He's the big stepper. That's what it is. And regards to how you might feel about Jamel Charlo, he he's the one out of the twins that he takes so all smoke. You know, um, if he say, you know, if somebody challenge him, you know, but, you know, I, I know Bud. But been, been been going in on him and shit. He been saying some things like, "Oh, you know, hey, you know, stay at your division and worry about, it. you know." That could mean a couple of things. It could mean he just don't want no parts of Bud, or it could mean he's just saying what it is. Yo, look, why are you worried about me? Take care of your business first. So you gotta look at it from both points of view. That does make sense, you know. But after watching the fight, he's an excellent fight. He's a good fighter. I still don't know if he, you know, he. he you know, he's strong. He's a fucking dog, bro. Both of them, him and Brian Gastonio, they showed a lot in that fight. But uh he's a dog, man. And I I don't I don't know if it's gonna be easy work for Terrence Crawford if they fight, but I think that's gonna be a good battle, man. Is he gonna uh Bug gonna have to pull a lot out of his core to get that boy out of there. You know, either you know, either 
either A, Terrence Crawford, is just, if he knocks out Jamel Charlo if they ever fight, he just that good and that strong, and everybody else Jamel Charlo's fighting just ain't strong enough, or or uh, Jamel Charlo either B, he's just that fucking durable. We'll, we'll have to find out. We don't know. You know. If they fight, if they ever fought, then, then we'll definitely see. Because, you know, he did say pretty much, yo, I, um, I'll, I'll fight him. You know, he can get this work. He said that, like, in the last interview he said when they brought up Terrence Crawford. So, looks like, you know, he's saying, hey, I'll fight him. So, that sounds good. It's promising. So, we'll see what happens in the past because there's a lot of things in the future. There's a lot of other things that got to get sorted out, man, in these divisions first before something like that could even happen. But, you know, to, to be honest, the Pat, Terrence Crawford and, and Jamel Charlo fighting at 154, uh, I don't know how likely that is to happen. The only way that would happen, like, within, like, a year would be if the Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford fight took place, but won the fight, and then uh, Charlo stuck around to defend his title at 154 to defend the belt, then, you know, Bud... He can activate that because he's a super champion at uh, WBO. So, you know, he can move up and challenge the the person that has a WBO belt, which is Jamel Charlo. You know, he can become the Mando. Uh, so, what's next, though? We, where does, you know, Jamel Charlo go? What's about to happen with his career? Well, him becoming undisputed, you know, that opens up a lot of new doors for him. As far as monetarily too, financially, uh, his his stock has definitely went up. Uh, 154, he has some good title defenses there. He has Sebastian Fundora. Uh, you know, uh, Tim Zhu wants a part of him. And I'll be honest with you, I told y'all how I feel about Tim Zhu. I just don't see what's special about Tim Zhu. I just don't. Yeah, he, he looks very basic to me. Almost... Almost real amateurs. I don't know. There's something about his style, I guess. I don't know. I just don't think he's all that good. So, you know, uh, Sebastian Fundora, you know, is only, is probably the only real challenge for him at that division, man. Jared Hurd, uh, we don't know what's going on with him. You know, he's been really inactive. He, his last fight was a loss. And if they were to fight i don't know you know if jared hurt's not been cracked yet because you know he's known for having a bulletproof chin as well but jared hurt is just uh he's just not fast enough i don't think he has what it takes to really beat jamel charlo he, he has the power but delivering that power might be a problem because he's not quick enough to me never understood where that name swift came from because he's definitely not fast you know that would be a good scrap though because you know there's a lot of outside uh animosity outside the ring between those two that should be nice to settle in the ring so if her called him out i think jamel would take that i hope he would take it and sebastian fundora is the only real challenge i think though erickson lubin absolutely not if he fights jamel again the same thing is going to happen i don't think it's going to happen like that in the first round but he's going to get stopped again he's going to get stopped again so i that's a no-no I would like to see a Harrison Jamel uh Harrison uh Charlo 3. That would be a nice trilogy. But at 154, there's really nothing left for Jamel Charlo to do besides, you know, a few uh okay title defenses and like a really good one, you know, which is uh Sebastian Fundura. But then he's supposed to move up to 160 pounds. His brother Jamal Charlo is supposed to move out of 160 up to 168. So uh, Jamal Charlo, on the other hand, you know he's he ha he's been really stagnant. It's, it's it's almost like he's gonna be riding on his brother's coattail, man, because he's not doing the things his brother is doing. He's been he ha he never fought for his belt. You know he didn't get his belt the hard way. You know I know a lot of people say, well, how you gonna say Jamal Charlo never fought for his belt when Devin Haney never fought for his belt? Understood though, but the difference is Devin Haney's not ducking no smoke. Jamal Charlo is. So that's a, that's the difference between Devin Haney and Jamal Charlo. Jamal Devin Haney is daring himself to be great. He's going after what he wants. He's not ducking anybody. He's he he wants all the issue. Jamal Charlo is putting all these stipulations on other fighters to fight and 
when he's the one calling out dudes and then he acting nervous and told about you got to have vaccines and all this other garbage. So this is why he doesn't really get my respect and a whole lot of other people feel the same way too. You know, it's outside or inside the ring, you know, but at least Jamel, you got to respect them in the ring. Absolutely. 100% hands down. That's what it is. I'll be a fool if I tell you that I don't respect Jamel in the ring. That's just straight. That's that's garbage. You know, you, you got to give him his respect, especially now after being undisputed, becoming undisputed. But things are going to get interesting soon. You got Bud and Arrow supposedly moving up to 154 after they fight. If if big if if they fight. Jamel Charlo will probably be gone by that time. And then uh, it depends, you know, that, that's that's a real different it's, the situation is a little weird when it comes to that, because I know Bud and Errol are going to move up at the same exact time. So if Errol was to move up first, more than likely Jamel would have been left, would leave the division because, you know, they don't want to fight each other. They're not going to really he's not going to fight them. They're not going to fight each other, even though it was words of, you know, people they talked about fighting. Would they ever fight each other? And they, you know, Arrow was like, nah, that's my brother. But, uh, you know, if the money is right, who knows? So they both kind of said the same thing. But that's not going to happen. So uh, Bud is going to end up moving up. And then Jamel, if he ever did fight Jamel, it would probably be at either a catch weight or at one, if, if he moved up to like once, if Bud moved to 160 or something. But so uh, that fight, you know, it can, it can be, it's possible that can happen, but... Uh, I don't see it happening no time soon, maybe two years, maybe something like that. If if Bud stuck around that long, if not, then they, they'll probably never fight. You know, timing is everything, man, when it comes to these divisional jumps, you know. So then you got Jamel, Jamal moving up to 168. Jamel at 160. I don't see anybody there at 160 for Jamel. So we might be looking at a damn undisputed at 160 as well would be Jamal will probably be Jamel Charlo. Uh only people I see there, you got a you know Jaime Mongia. Uh forget about Triple G. I'm thinking he's dropping his belt, I believe, just to go up and fight Canelo. He he's chasing Canelo hard, man. He's about to cash out. He don't want no parts of Jamel Charlo. He knows this. He don't want no parts of none of the Charlo twins, to be honest. He already showed that. So you got 160. If you get up there, you got uh who uh, Jaime Mogia? I believe he's at 160. Correct? I believe that's yeah. So there's talks that that could be a possibility. I don't know exactly how that's supposed to happen, but nonetheless, uh, Jamel Charlo has a lot of options. Uh, this opened up a lot of doors for him at 154. Shit, man, he he gonna have a lot of people knocking on his door to fight him. You know. But I'll say this, man. The dude, is, he's tough. He's tough, man. I think he's a tall order for a lot of people, man, because I think his chin, you know. I, I think, look, the dude was hardly sweating, man. Brian Castaño was giving him everything. You saw his face. I never seen Jamel's face fucked up either. He was taking a lot of punches from Brian. The dude is tough, dude. I don't know if this motherfucker's a Wolverine or what the fuck he is, man, but he's tough, dude. You got to give him his respect. He's tough. He never was physically hurt in this fight, you know, but um he he's he's a he's a star. He's a star, man. Gotta give him his respect. He's definitely going to the Hall of Fame. You know. So we'll see what happens for Jamal for Jamel Charlo in, in the coming months, what's next for him. I think what'll probably happen next would be I believe his Mando should be Sebastian Fundora. Uh, I have to I have to go check the rankings. I believe it is Sebastian Fundora for the WBC. Uh, I'm gonna check all his uh, upcoming, like who's ranked in the each each sanction body. He's ranked up there in the tops, you know. But Sebastian Fundora clearly said he wanted to fight Jamel Charlo next. Um. Tim Zhu say, but I'm like, Tim Zhu, you ain't really did much yet, bro. You know, I understand. Sometimes I'm like getting into it like you ain't really did much crap. But, you know, if you want the fight, take it, man. Challenge yourself. But I don't believe in skipping the line that people that put in work more than work more work than you did. No, you know, you know, take. Uh, I think Tim Zhu might be coming up as one of the mandos for those belts, too. But I think right there, though, it should be for the WBC. I think it is. Um. 
Sebastian Fondora. So that would probably be his. If he stays around at 154, that would probably you'll probably see that as his next fight is a Sebastian Fondora. And then after after Sebastian Fondora, maybe he'll stick around for another title defense because that's what it's all about too, man. We want to see title defenses. We don't. That's what we was getting mad at Canelo about, and that's what I didn't like about Canelo. You get the belts at 168, and then you just you just decide to not fucking defend them and jump up to 175. Okay, man. Like, why don't you handle? Why don't you, you know, defend your titles first, man? At least one title defense, and then if you want to move up, cool. You know, but don't come on. You know, so that's why everybody was upset, and I still am upset about that. And you know, you see what happens. When you don't handle your business, you know, the boxing guards start talking to you. That's what happened in Canelo the other day with Bevel, you know. But uh, that's my take on Jamel Charlo, man. Yo, congrats to him for becoming the first undisputed at 154 in the four belt era. Takes a lot to do that, man. He collected his belts. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be real. He collected his the hard way, bro. Uh, took the belts off Jason Rosario. Uh, took the belts off Brian Castaño. Those were tough fights. And I believe he, uh, yeah, that's how he got his belts because before uh, before he fought Jason Rosario, he fought, uh, shit, what's his name? Bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, he fought, he fought John Jackson, I believe. And that's how he ended up obtaining the WBC belt. So, it was vacant, and he fought. He knocked out John Jackson. I forgot which round it was, and that's how he obtained a WBC strap. So he he uh, he still fought, man. When you look at it, when 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 somebody fights for a vacant belt, you still fought for the belt. You still fought for the belt. It was still there up for grabs. You know, it's not like somebody uh, elevated him to get the strap, or or he, you know, he was quote unquote emailed the strap. So. No matter how you look at it, he fought John Jackson, which was for the vacant WBC. Then he took the belts, the other, he took the IBF and the WBA off of uh, Jason Rosario. And then he took the WBO off of Brian Castaño. So he fought, man. He fought for his straps. You know, one way or another, he he was, he was fought for his shit. So you got to respect that. And uh, much respect to Jamel Charlo for that, man. Anyway, let me know what you think. What is next for Jamel uh, Charlo? What is his future looking like? This has uh, been a good one, man. Big good weekend of boxing. Oh, this weekend is going to be some interesting fights as well, man. Yeah, boxing is boxing is definitely with it. It's definitely hitting right now. But I'm off this, man. I'll see y'all in the next vid. Stay tuned for more good content. And I'm out.